we've got damage dealing monsters that we can Goomba stomp from above, but let's be honest, monsters that don't go anywhere are pretty lame. In this tutorial, we will set up a patrol route for our monster that will allow us to select different positions on the map to have them move back and forth in between. So first thing we're going to do to get started here is actually create those patrol points. So over here in your hierarchy, we'll get you to right click, create empty. I'm actually going to call this one patrol point zero, which will make more sense in a second. Now I'm also going to click over here on this gizmos. So this cube here with the arrow, which allows us to make gizmos. I like the red one. And all that's going to do is make it so that on the map, we can now see where our patrol point is actually showing up. That won't show up in the game, but it's helpful when we're preparing on the map. I can now move this around and pick one of the points that I'd like my baby dragon to patrol to. I'm then going to just duplicate that and I'll rename this one so that it's patrol point one. And then I'm just going to move it to a different point on the map that I also want him to patrol to. So this will set him to patrol back and forth between these two points. All right, it's time to do some scripting. For this one, I'm going to create a monster movement script. So create a new C sharp, and we'll call this one monster movement. All right, so once you get inside of your script, there's a few variables we're gonna need to create right off the bat. The first one is we are going to create a public transform variable. Remember transform is the component in Unity right at the top when you add a sprite or any game object that keeps track of their position, rotation, and scale. And so this is gonna allow us to find the position that we want our monster to head to. Now in this case, we're actually gonna to wanna to keep track of more than one transform though. So we're actually gonna make an array, which means adding square brackets. We're gonna call this one patrol points. With that array added, we can now put the monster script onto our baby dragon. And you'll notice that there's now this thing called patrol points with a drop down arrow. At the moment, the list is empty, but we can grab patrol point zero and drag that onto here and it will show up. We can also drag patrol point one. And if you wanted to, you could have more than one patrol point, but for a side scroller like this, back and forth is kind of what I want. So our monster now knows where it's supposed to go, but we need to actually make our monster move. So we're gonna need a new variable. Well, this one's gonna be a float and we'll call this one move speed. We're also going to need to add one last thing, which is an integer. And this one's actually just gonna keep track of which patrol point is currently the destination of our monster. So I'm gonna go patrol destination. All right, once all of that's done, we can actually get rid of our start function as we're gonna, not going to be needing that today. And we can head into our update. So essentially what we wanna do here is have Unity check to see which of the patrol points our monster is supposed to be headed to, and then send the monster to that patrol point. So if he's supposed to be going to number one, we're gonna make sure that his transform dot position, meaning the position of the monster, is gonna be set to a new vector two. And we're gonna be using a new code here called move towards. Now the way that a vector two dot move towards works is that it will take in a couple of values. The first is the location of the object itself, in this case, our skeleton. The second is the object that you want to move towards, in this case, the patrol point. There will then be a third object, which is simply how quickly you want to move between those two points. So in brackets here, we're going to start with the current position. So he's going to move from his current transform position. Then we do a comma. We say where we want him to go to next, which is going to be patrol points. That's that variable we created at the top. And since we want him to go to zero, then in square brackets, we'll put a zero dot position. So the position of that patrol point, we can do a, another comma. And now we just need to say the speed at which we want him to move, which is going to be our move speed variable. Now, as with any movement script, we are going to multiply this by time dot delta time. And that's just going to make sure that this movement happens nice and smooth and isn't wrecked by frame rate, but instead moves according to time in a smooth fashion. So this will get him right at the beginning headed to the patrol point, but at the moment he would just sit at that patrol point all day. So what we need to do now is check to see if he's reached his destination. So we're gonna go if vector two, and this time instead of the move towards, we're gonna use a vector two dot distance. Now the way that a vector two dot distance works is it calculates the distance between two objects, in this case, our enemy and the patrol point that he's moving towards. 
Once he gets within a certain distance, in this case we'll be setting it to decimal two meters, he will then turn around and start to move towards the other point. Again, it will calculate the distance between him and that point, and once that distance gets small enough, he'll then turn around and head back to the other point. So the first value we'll put in here is the transform dot position of the monster itself, and then we'll check the distance between it and the transform position of our patrol point. And finally, we'll just get it to check and see if the distance between those two positions is less than 0.2f, which just means a really small amount. We'll then do our curly brackets just to say what we want to happen if he gets really close to the patrol point. Now, what we do want to happen at this point is he's hit patrol destination zero, so now we want to send him to number one. So we'll make patrol destination equal to one. All right, we can actually grab this code here and we're gonna copy and paste almost all of it identically right down below here, except that this time, once patrol destination is one, we need to tell it what happens if it is one. So if patrol destination is one, then we want it to move to patrol destination one. And if the distance between himself and number one is less than two, then we're gonna send him back to zero. All right, now somewhere along the line, I accidentally erased one of my curly brackets, which is why that was upset with me. Back in Unity, don't forget to make sure that you set some move speed for your monster so that he's actually able to go somewhere. Now when you run the game at this point, you may run into a problem that looks something like this. The main reason for that is simply that your patrol points are set too low, so the enemy is actually trying to go down into the ground, but his collider is keeping him from being able to do that. Now he's moving back and forth nice and smooth between the patrol points. The only obvious problem is that he's currently not flipping. And in this case, we're not going to be able to use the flip component in our sprite renderer. You may have seen this done before where you can simply click X in order to flip him. The only problem is because we have a parent-child situation going on, if we do that, his colliders will end up in the wrong place and things won't work quite right. So what we're going to do is just add a line of script. We're going to go right down here to where we reset our patrol destinations, and we're just going to move that down one line. So after he reach, reaches patrol destination zero, before he turns around, we're going to type in transform.local scale. All this is going to do is affect the scale part of our transform component. We're going to set it to a new vector three. Now when I click on my enemy, you can see that my current scale is one, one, and one. So in order to have my monster face left, I just need to keep that scale of one, one, and one. However, if I want him to go in the opposite direction, I'm gonna to wanna to change the X to a negative one. All right, so you'll notice now that he flips back and forth really nicely when he hits those patrol points. Thanks for watching another Night Run Studio game development video. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to hit the like button or subscribe to the channel.